Welcome to a video from the Lifestyle.com. In this video, I'm going to have a, give you my first impressions of the Surface Duo 2, and especially compared to the original Surface Duo, which I've been using for just over a year now. I really love this device. I really enjoyed using this device. There's a couple of major drawbacks, and that's meant perhaps carrying another device with me at time to time. Does this fix those issues? Well, we'll find out. So I'll move the camera around so we can focus a bit more on the Duo, and uh, well, let's find out the differences. So the first thing you noticed is the overall design. So here's the original duo. See it's got very square and not sharp, but almost sharp edges around the side. And then there's the gap in the middle with the um with the display which goes as you see it goes right it, it's flat up to the edge there. And with the duo I noticed that it's all nice and curved on here so these edges are smooth and curved so it feels much nicer when you're holding it in your hand uh, if you're wondering what this is by the way this is a little magnetic USB-C uh, connector because it doesn't have wireless charging we'll talk about that at the end uh, so I just plugged the cable straight in so it's got this very nice smooth uh, edges to it so it feels nicer holding it so I think that's a, a good improvement it also feels a lot more solid than the original Duo. The original Duo is super, like, um, it feels really thin and it does feel a bit delicate and that has led to the cracking of the USB-C port there on many devices including this one. Um, whereas the Duo 2 feels a lot more substantial, the USB-C port feels more substantial. It's slightly thicker and it's slightly heavier so um, I think it's like 284 grams up from 250 and it's 5.5 mil thick instead of 4.8 you can't really tell the thickness difference uh, unless you really put them side by side but it does feel a lot nicer when you're holding it like this now the other thing that's changed is um, the camera bump which obviously there's no camera bump on the other one because there's no rear camera at all um, I'll talk a bit more about the cameras in a minute. So it does feel slightly different because you've got those camera bumps, but holding it feels nice. It's smooth. I'm, I've got a bumper for it, but I'm not sure I'm actually going to use it because I do like the feel of this. The hinges as well also feel um, slightly different, smoother. Um, I never had any real issue with, it, it, with the hinges. Some people d did, felt them a bit crunchy, but mine, mine's no, no problem on either device. By curving the screen, in particular here, you see how it curves there. It's got that more elegant look on it because things curve in there. So I think the the um, the curved screen looks really nice on it. So I think that's 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 been the overall feel of it. Feels better and it looks better. And I think especially the curved screens, the way that that curves in, looks really nice. So you see here's on the original duo with the with the sort of edge with the, the border there it does feel like two distinct screens whereas this curved in effect looks a little bit better I think I do I do like that we're talking of the screens as well the screen is actually slightly bigger on the duo 2 um, 8.2 inches across there and 8.1 on the original duo and that is down to the um, without increasing the size as well and that is down to the bezel size so here's it so the original duo and the new juggling devices um, you can't really see too much on there it's hard for me to, to show you on here side by side yeah these bezels are smaller so you've got extra screen on there without increasing the overall size which is nice the other thing on here as well is this has got a 90 hertz display instead of 60 with adaptive as well um, so I found that makes um, things on the screen yeah so the 60 hertz screen you see it looks better when you're scrolling through applications it, it, it looks a lot nicer so 90 hertz refresh rate looks a lot better especially when you start doing the gestures and getting rid of things and moving things over and uh, if I close that application you see so 90 Hertz screen looks a lot better I do like that um, 
It's very sharp as well, the screen, very clear and bright. So it's really nice, the, the, the screens on it. Now, the other thing that, it, by having this um, curved in effect, is you get something called the glance bar. So I don't know if I can show that on here. You see you've got this little display there. You can see that's the time. But on here you get notifications, you get your charging indicator. There you go. You can see, so it's using that to show you your, your charge indication. And if you get as you get notifications in, if we get some on, I'll show you. Um, you get the you get um, incoming call alerts. You get um, the number of uh, emails and messages and read, and it pops up there. It's not permanently on. It just comes on as they come in, or you tap the the power button, and it'll it'll show you on there as well, like that. So it's a really nice, handy little feature. A big difference with the uh, the Duo Two is it comes with Android Eleven. The original Surface Duo came with Android 10, Android 10, and uh, still with Android 10. Although Android 10, although Android 11 it should be coming to the Duo, original Duo at some point. We don't know when, and there's not a huge amount of changes to it. But um, does uh, it? First of all, it feels smoother. That could be because of the better processor, um, but it does feel smoother using it, faster, um, and more responsive. There are some other nice features like you can specify that some apps open in dual screen mode rather than single screen mode. So for example, I've got Outlook always open spanned um, and you can choose which of these apps opens like that. So you could be say OneNote or your news app or uh, OneDrive that always opens in the dual screen mode. So I have this for example, it's set now to open, open single screen mode, but I could pick any of the other apps and uh, like I've done with the with Outlook and it always opens in dual screen mode. So I think that's a, that's a nice feature, it remembers that. Um, the camera uses, uh, I'll show you the camera in a minute, but the camera app uses that dual screen functionality really well. So you've got control over it, you get to pick which apps open in, in dual screen mode by default. Um, if I've, What I've found is if you've got a screen open and then you select another uh, application, select an application that you've got configured for dual screen, it doesn't overwrite the other one. So it only does that option when you um, don't have anything on the other screen at that time, which is nice. So I think that's a that's a nice touch. What they have done is improved the the um, the reliability of gestures. This one of the original issues I had with the Surface, one of the Surface Duo issues. What they have done is improve the reliability of the gestures. So what I found on the original Duo is they tended to be a bit unreliable sometimes and you would do something and it wouldn't work. Whereas um, now I found that your task switching and switching your applications to and everything is much more responsive and uh, works much better. So I think that's been a good improvement with, with the OS. Plus you've got some other Android 11 feature, nice uh, features like the uh, brightness and the um, and the volume sliders like that were there. I also found that the auto rotate is, is much better at understanding which posture you had. And the other one I used to rotate it a lot on, on the duo because it, it does sometimes get confused um, but there's no issues with that on this. It does seem to understand oh, what you're trying to do and going into single screen mode as well always seems to work rather than it always choosing the wrong screen, um, which I found on the other one. And I think that's because it defaults to this one and you can manually switch it around by uh, double tapping the screen like that. I think it's the reason, one of the reasons it's improved is because it always seems to defo default to this screen. It does give the option to double tap to return it back, but um, yeah, it always goes there and it doesn't seem to get confused. And then when you open up again, it carries on. So I think the sensors and the logic behind it works much better Android 11 and makes everything a lot more accessible. And I do like using um, the Duo in that sort of um, landscape mode um, or portrait mode I should say in this mode. Um, quite often I have a team screen up there and a browser down here so uh, this is one of the great things about the Duo is it gives you this this view. 
and you've still got the usual thing of spanning across two screens like that um, but it does it does actually make for a nice browsing experience when you you've got it like that it's like a, it's, it is like a tablet then rather than uh, a phone and that's one of the great things about the duo so you can see it's smooth it's keeping up with me it's not it's unpre it's predictable it's not randomly moving the screen around and that's one of the things i had on um on the previous uh, device the other thing that's not slightly new is these widgets as well which you've got on here so see i just slide swiping from the left and it's very much like the widgets from uh, Windows 10 you can customize this you can use Android widgets and you can bring your own news feed in there so let's talk about the camera now I'm not, I'm not done a huge amount of testing with the camera because I only just got the device but at, uh, first of all the camera is way faster as you see and just press it it comes on with the original duo press the camera button so you get away and there I am with the front facing camera because there is no rear facing camera and especially if you it can get confused on which screen you want if you want to take a picture you've got to fade it, fold it this way and so if you are actually no see I've got it wrong already if I want to take a picture I need to go this way bring this bring this way around and I'll put it this way so you and actually if I want to take a picture I need to go that way so on the original duo you want to take a picture uh, it's using the front facing camera so you've got to fold it round you've got to get into that posture mode and then it's ready to go it's a bit slow um, but the results aren't brilliant on there well of course now you've got this triple camera which has got a 12 megapixel wide and telephoto and 16 ultra wide uh, it's got optical zoom it, it, it's a way better camera um, but then you notice the thing as well was I just you can take the picture it's fast and what I'm getting all the time as well is a preview there so what I'm getting here is shot previews as I'm taking these pictures uh, which is really nice so you can compare them so um, what I did last night was I tried to side by side the camera so these two shots were that's taken with the original duo uh, which is outside last night so you can see it's uh, very blurry and not particularly inspiring whereas I take uh, this is the one I took with the with the duo 2 and this is the one I took with the duo 2 and it's sharp clear and bright and the camera is so much better in using in at night mode. I really was able to get some really nice pictures last night, and I think the difference is with this is I can use this as a camera, whereas with the original Surface Duo, I used to carry another phone with me just if I wanted to take pictures. With this, and I can take 4K video. It's just quick, and it's got I think quite a lot of Android phone has. Where let's see, you just double tap power and the camera's up there straight away, take picture. So it like it's it's like cameras on other phones. <laughs> it works as it should do. Um, I took very few pictures with the original Surface Duo. Uh, it was okay. You could do them, but uh, this is going to be great. This is going to work. So really, this answers one of the main issues I have with the Duo. It's got you got your three. You've got your triple camera mode and. Uh, you get some way better pictures. I can take 4K video. It's going to be much better for me. So um, what I'm going to do is a separate video and blog post with some photos over the weekend when I get out and take some pictures. But yeah, definitely much better. The main problem with the original uh, duo was the camera, and that has been fixed in this. Another little minor thing that's pretty important to me though is this supports NFC. So I've got Google Pay on here. The original Geo I didn't, and um, that meant means that I can use contactless payment and just open it up. I can open up the Google Pay app, contactless payment, and that was another reason why I kept another device with me to do that. So again, back to a single device. So this is now a phone rather than so a sophisticated dual screen tablet that you could use as a phone. This is now a phone. I mentioned as well in the box. Um, 
as, as well as a USB C to C cable, was a pair of um, earbuds, wired earbuds, USB C, uh, which are actually quite handy. So that's pretty good for doing Teams calls and that kind of thing. I use Bluetooth as a surface uh, earbuds, but um, it's good to have those those on there as well. Uh, no, no bumper included in the box. You've got to pay extra for that. I, I did get it, but I'm not sure I'm going to use it because I use one of these slip cases, especially designed for the original duo. But it's the, the same size, so it fits in there perfectly. And I think this protects it more in my pocket than the bumper does. So I think I'll probably stick with this until it gets a bit tatty, and then maybe I'll put the bumper on there. Uh, there's some other nice improvements as well. There's um, 5G support. Uh, Bluetooth 6, improved Bluetooth, um, the fingerprint reader is built into the power button now so uh, you, turning it on unlocks it and it works brilliantly, I've not had any issues where I've got to keep retyping the pin number in, it works It works fine on there. Sound has been improved, um, I won't play any music because it, it copyright things will come through but the sound speaker is on both, device, both screens now so it sounds a lot better. The other one sound a bit tinny. This uh, is, is much improved as well, so sound definitely feels better. You, there's no point in me demonstrating because it's just going through the YouTube's anyway. So that that's good. The faster processor, you can feel it. It doesn't. Uh, what I found occasionally on um, say on the original duo is you would open an app and it would think about it, and when you got rid of it like that. It would definitely think about it, and I don't know if I can even show you. So you would close it like that, and it would just reappear and then disappear again. No, she's not doing it now, but it's done that all the time, more or less. Whereas you know, this feels way quicker, closing apps feels quicker. You can definitely feel that that improvement in processor combined with Android 11, I think, and the, and the improvements Microsoft have made. Has it got a couple of issues with it? Uh, I can't get Android Auto to work in my car. It did with the previous duo by enabling developer mode. This doesn't work at all. So uh, hopefully there's a, there's a fix for that because I do use that. Um, I had a quick search around and it looks like it could be Android 11. There's no wireless charger. I mentioned I use this magnetic USB uh, C cable. US wireless charging would be much uh, appreciated but it's not there so I've um, not got wireless charging on there and also the Your Phone app which is uh, where you can uh, get your messages on your PC and everything else uh, doesn't support really apps on it like it does with the Samsung phone so you can do screen mirroring but you can't um, you can't do single apps on there um, I'll do it I'll uh, show you on the screen but I don't know exactly what I mean in a minute but Right, that's a shame because Microsoft did show that off at the uh, launch event. So I'm hoping that that is just um, just an update that needs coming from Microsoft from your phone app, and that will, this will then uh, will, will come on here. There's still some other stuff for Microsoft to do as well. Some apps like Authenticator app, which I use all the time. Um, if you it doesn't understand uh, the dual screen mode, it just puts it into into sort of that big screen uh, vertical mode. So, it's still work for Microsoft to do, and I wish Google would be slightly better with their uh, with their uh, implementation of dual screens. Many of the app, the Google apps um, just you know, don't understand the concept of split screens. You know, it just it just splits it. it. It would be better if you know you had actually it was like actually optimized for dual screens. Um, some other things mentioned the surface pen the surface pen works with the with the duo but just with one not really um they could do with a bit more support um i didn't really use the pen that much but uh, it would be nice if it had some more features to it the battery has been improved it's uh 4449 milliamp hours instead of 3577 whether that leads to actual significant improvement in battery life i'm not sure because uh, it's got the 90 uh, screen on it and just like the larger screen as well so we'll have to see we'll start using it overall i love the duo the original duo it, it's a great device um, it had its shortcomings mainly the camera and uh, nfc so i think those were the those are the two things i really didn't like about this it meant i had to carry another device around i could live with the glitches and some of the inconsistencies 
what the Duo 2 has done is it's improved on those little tiny glitches and inconsistencies, but it's added the much improved camera and NFC. So really, and now I've got the device that I originally wanted. Um, the screen, the way it feels, everything much better. So I, I really like this. Um, it's not for everyone. Dual screens aren't for everyone. Um, it, if you just want the, the latest phone, then maybe the dual screen device is not for you. If you want to have the split functionality, which is I quite often do, I usually have uh, one note in one screen, maybe edge in the other, or to do in the other, or no outlook split between the two. If you like the dual screen functionality, then this is a great device. It doesn't feel like an old phone, but now with the improvements, you can use it as an old phone as well. So it really bridges that gap between them. So it's not for everybody, it's expensive, and it has its quirks, but it does not as many quirks as the original one does. And the addition of these extra, all these improvements have meant that this is now a phone I can use day to day and I really enjoy using it. So that's my initial first impressions. Uh, I'll have more on digitallifestyle.com photo um, comparisons coming up soon. Uh, so thanks for watching this video.